I wish to say a few words about our path. Our path is basically the path of the heart and not that of the mind. This does not mean that I am criticizing the path of the mind. Far from it. We feel that the path of the heart leads us faster towards our goal. Now, each individual is sincere or has to be sincere and at the same time each individual can be wise too. Sincerity is one thing, stupidity is something else. Again, sincerity is one thing, along with sincerity, if you have wisdom, then we can fulfill our task sooner than otherwise. So when we follow the path they heard, we feel only one thing that is constantly required and that is love. If there is love, there is fulfillment. If there is fulfillment, then God is bound to be there. God is there where there is fulfillment. He will never be satisfied with something incomplete, unfulfilled, unrealized, unmanifested. He wants from us realization, revelation, manifestation, and perfect perfection. These are the things that each individual seeker has to perform or acquire in his lifetime. And if it is not possible to acquire all these things, realization, revelation, manifestation and perfection in one short span, if he cannot acquire all these things, then he, may, he has to take many more incarnations. But God will never allow anybody to remain unrealized and unfulfilled. Today it is time for you to realize God. Tomorrow it will be the time for somebody else to realize God. Day after will be time for me to realize God. There is an hour which you call God's chosen hour. So at God's chosen hour, when it is chosen for you, you will realize. When it is for you, you will realize. When it is for you, you will realize. It is bound to. But now the chosen hour, we can hasten the chosen hour with our aspiration. Yes, we can go here. This is the goal. Now, I can go walking here. I can come. I can come on cycle. I can come here. Cycling. I can buy car. I can go. Again, if I take the plane, I can come. Now, I have to know if I take the plane, I will come faster, infinitely faster than if I just start walking. So in the spiritual life, all of it is like that. Something will help us to reach our goal faster than other things. And that is what? As I said, love. As this jet plane 
will take you faster to your destination. So also love is going to lead you faster to your destination. This love is inside the heart, not inside the mind. Inside the mind there is very limited, in a very limited measure. Inside the heart, it is in abundant, in infinite measure. Now why it is inside the heart, not it is inside my mind or inside my hand, inside my fist? No. Inside the heart is the soul. Soul is not here, soul is not here, soul is not inside my shoulder, it is not inside my knee, inside my elbow, it is inside my heart here. Soul permeates whole whole consciousness, the consciousness of the soul permeates my entire body, but the actual location of the soul is here, inside the heart. So soul has everything, peace, light, bliss, in infinite measure. Now from the soul, we get these divine qualities inside the heart. Now from the heart, again we can bring them to the mind, from here, bring it to the heart, then we can bring up or to the mind. So my path is the path of the heart and inside the heart I see it is all love. My heart means our spiritual heart is flooded with divine love. Now, whenever we think of God, we think of God as something vast, something divine, something boundless, something most powerful, God the omniscient, God the omnipotent, God the omnipresent. This is our feeling of God, conception of God. But when we go deep within, we see that the conception of God that we have God the omniscient, God the omnipotent, God the omnipresent, they do not entirely satisfy us. God is omnipotent, so what? Somebody is richer than I, so what? Somebody is more capable of doing something more than I, so what? He has his own capacity, I have my own capacity, my capacity is True, infinitely, uh, less than his. His capacity is far surpasses mine. So I stay in my cap with my capacity. He goes on with his own capacity. But what happens is that God has another quality, which is called love. God the love. That quality is like a magnet. It pulls us. Mother has that love. The child runs towards the mother. The child has that love. Mother runs towards this child. This magnetic pull is in the love. So God pulls us. It is love. And we pull God with our magnetic love. Magnetic love together. He pulls us with his love and we pull him with our love. Now, so when we think of God, a seeker, a seeker thinks that God, he needs God just because he needs fulfillment. He needs a feeling of inseparable oneness. And love gives that feeling of oneness, not power. Not any other thing. Not any other quality of God. But it is the quality of love that gives us the feeling of oneness with God. Now inside love, other qualities grow. Peace, light, bliss, power. So love is the strongest force here. Because inside love, everything can grow. God's peace can grow, God's love can, God, God's joy can grow, God's delight can grow, God's other 
divine qualities. So our path we feel is easier, more effective in this sense. Here we don't have to read millions of books to know what the truth is. Here we don't have to exercise our mind day in day out to know what the tr what truth looks like. No, truth is inside us. It is crying to come to the fore. But unfortunately, we have kept the door closed, and we are not allowing the truth to come out. Now, how can we try? How can we bring the truth out? Of the prison cell that we have created. Again, I have to say, it is through love. Love for whom? Love for God. And who is God? It is the highest living part in us. God is not something else. God is not somebody else. He is within us. It is. We have, when you think of God, if you can feel that our feet and head, let us see, feet is still in his ignorance, it is in, under clay, and head is hub, above in the sky. So, here, if I have to go up, I have to know that my highest part is head, and my lowest part is now the feet. But if I know the highest and the lowest are mine, and this lowest has to be transformed into the highest one day, or the lowest has to enter into the highest so that it it becomes totally merged there, highest. So in our path, we say the identification is absolutely necessary. The highest has to feel its oneness, total oneness with the lowest. The lowest has to feel its oneness with the highest. Now, highest always feels its oneness. It is the lowest that finds it difficult. Out of fear, doubt, jealousy and so forth. One who has the light the possessor of light is not afraid of entering into darkness because he knows as soon as he enters into darkness, he will be able to illumine the darkness. Now in this room if there is no light and I come with a torch, flashlight, immediately I know that I have the possessor, I am, I, have, I am carrying a flashlight, the room will be illumined. So the spiritual life also when we have light, we are not afraid of darkness. But what happens? The darkness is afraid of light. Darkness feels, oh, I am exposed. I have done many things wrong. I have told lies. I have cheated someone. I have uh, um, misbehaved. Then light will come and I will be caught like a thief. I will be caught red-handed. Then darkness wants to hide. Now, what can the light do? Light is coming not to expose, light is coming to illumine and transform darkness into light. This room was unlit, obscured for a long time. Then, light wants to, to enter to transform the very face of darkness. But darkness is afraid of light. So, this is what is happening in, this, in the modern world. The people, in spite of the fact that man needs light, Men are afraid of light. Now, again, where is this light? In the mind? Never. It is in the soul. The little light that we always see in the mind can never, can never guide us to our goal, destined goal. The steam goal is very far. 
And we need light. What kind of light the mind has? A candle light. When the storm of doubt comes, is blown. Then again you are in the same darkness, you in darkness you are grouping. Now look at the power of the candle light. When there is wind, the wind immediately the candle is blown. Now again you are the beggar, you are the blind, you cannot walk. And who, what has caused this? How is it that the candle is extinguished? By doubt, by your own fear, by your own anxiety, by your own jealousy and imperfection. Now, so here the mind has this candle light. How long can you stay? But here you have got ceaseless light. So, because it is part and parcel of the highest. I need to have the direct contact with the self, with this ultimate, with the absolute. So here it is a continuous flow of light. It does not end. The ocean of light. You can use it all your life. You won't. You won't feel that you are running short of it. Here, if you use the light, gone. like a candle light, matter of a few seconds, but a few minutes, gone. Now, again, the, we say we have very scanty light here, very limited light. But is it true that we shall always have limited light there? No. Since head is also, mind is also God's creation, it has to get abundant light. Otherwise, in the mind, we shall remain practical animals. Doubting people, suspecting people, hating people, this is what we shall do with the mind. God will not tolerate this. God will not allow us. So God wants us to bring the light from the heart, from the soul, and transform the mind that doubts, that is scared to death, that hates people or that wants to lord it over others. Again, I used to come back to our path, is the path of the heart, path of love. When you love someone, you really want to give all that we have and all that we are. God loves us, that's why He is ready to give us at every moment His infinite peace, infinite light, infinite bliss and infinite power. But unfortunately we don't love Him the way He loves us. So when He wants to give us something, His infinite peace, light and bliss, either we suspect Him or we suspect ourselves. We suspect ourselves. How can it? I never prayed to him. I never thought of him. I did so many things wrong. Why should he come to me in this way? We try to justify ourselves. I have done millions of things wrong. And why should God come to me? We suspect. And then when he's standing right in front of us, we will let you know it is like a false coin. Coin is true, but it seems it is a false coin. So this is a false God without doubting. Now, in the spiritual life, when you meditate, first thing you do is to conquer doubt. <coughs> if I doubt myself, who is the loser? I will be the loser. If I doubt you, who will be the loser? I will be the loser. Now, God has all divine qualities in boundless measure. If I doubt God, God is not going to lose anything. He will go back with his own divine infinite qualities. He will stay with his qualities. If I don't want to take from him, if I feel that it is wrong God, false God, fake God, like this is it is, then we don't get anything from him. We don't. Then if I doubt myself at the same time, that I am not fit for spirituality, as she read out the article, who is fit for yoga. 
I am not fit for spirituality. I am not meant for God. I am not meant for God realization. If I start doubting myself, again it is I who am not getting what God wants to give me. But if I have real love for God, like a child, he has true love for his mother. He runs towards his mother in spite of the fact that his whole body is full of mud, clay and sand. He knows that as soon as he goes to his mother, his mother will throw up this rubbish sand and all that, his mother will embrace him, kiss him and so forth. This is, he knows his mother is going to do that. And he knows it is his mother only can clean him, not he. He, he knows how to mix in the clay and all this kind of things he will do. He will soil his own body. But he will not, he knows that he is not in a position or he does not have the capacity to clean himself properly. He runs towards his mother, crying. And mother, with all her affection, mother will purify him. So in spiritual life also, when we have that same kind of love for God, we go towards God with everything, without bondage, imperfection, limitations, what we have right now. If you have love, the child has love, that's why he goes with all his imperfection, with, the, with his ugly body. So if, I have also, if you also have that same kind of love for God, you will run towards God with the same kind of imperfection here. No fear, because you will know that it is God who has the capacity to perfect your nature, to perfect your life, to perfect everything that is undivine right now in you. So our path is the path of love, path of heart, path of perfection. And then, one thing I used to say, our path is the path of total acceptance. We have to accept the world. Now we have to know that if you enter into the Himalayan cave, or sit on the mountain top, or dive into the blue vast ocean, and cry for peace there, then we are not going to do anything for us. It is like this. I will eat food and let my brothers remain unfed. Let them starve. That is not good. If I am real a human being, if I have got my meal, I have to see if my brothers are also eating or not, whether they are starving or not. If they, if they are starving, then I will not eat. I have to feed them. Well, when we are eating together, then only we get real satisfaction. So in the spiritual life, real spiritual masters, as in the line, they feel that they have to, if they are eating, they will eat in front of humanity and share with humanity. Now, again, depends on the hunger of humanity. If my brothers are not totally hungry, they say that they will eat very little or much nothing. So if humanity is a, as a whole does not want to eat as much as should, then what can these spiritual masters do? But if there is somebody sincerely hungry, then the spiritual master has the meal to eat. I have got it, let us share. So my path is the path of acceptance. Here we have to accept the earth as it is, but we have to know one thing, that this is not the end. Earth is far, far away from perfection, far from perfection. Unless you have accepted the earth, how are you going to perfect it? Unless we eat, unless we touch anything, how are you going to transform it? If somebody has pain, he needs message, then naturally I have to touch his head and message his head. Then only pain will go. 
when earth is defective at a particular place and that defective part if i don't touch how are you am i going to transform it anything that is defective has to be made perfect now if i don't touch the thing how am i going to perfect it now if you see that i have something wrong in me by staying there you cannot change my or tell me nature you have to enter into me and then only you can transform me change me. so if you really love mankind then you have to be with mankind and for that again what we need is love if you do not have love you will never stay with mankind more than a fleeting second but if you love for mankind then you should sit as long as this earth consciousness is not realized i will try to stay on earth to be of help even for one individual if love is there constant sacrifice can be made and then you come to realize where is sacrifice as i said before if it is my highest and lowest or if it is my last part right now one part of mine is not conscious of the highest and the highest is me trying to make conscious trying to make the other part conscious so if humanity is right now not crying for peace light and bliss happiness then we have not to give up our enthusiasm or our inspiration our service no we shall continue slowly steadily we shall mix with thousands of people out of thousands if one person cries for light or if one person is pinched with hunger let us try to feed that one and others when they are hungry tomorrow i will feed them tomorrow so we have not to give up our hope on what we have to do is to exercise our patience when patience is required we have to offer our service when service is required we have to offer everything as the time demands us to come back to my path my path is the path of love and in the path of love only you can have the feeling of inseparable oneness wherever you see oneness you have joy in unity is our prosperity and reality but in diversity we do not get cross according to our satisfaction when we are one we stand when we are many we just pull one another pull down break down so love is oneness inseparable oneness god is ours on the strength of love we can say and god also claims us on the strength of his love